ancient dwellings from civilizations past, the expansive terrain of southwest Colorado, hidden cliffs revealing diverse wildlife. All of this and more comprise Massa Verde National Park, one of America's oldest and most interesting places. Let's explore what makes the remnants of a lost civilization so important to the cultural identity of the United States and provide some interesting facts about Massa Verde along the way. The cliff dwellings seen at Massa Verde come from a group of people called the Anazazi, who after living on the top of mesas in the area for many centuries, began constructing homes beneath the cliff sometime in the late 12th century. They lived in the villages under the cliffs for about 100 years before migrating towards New Mexico and Arizona, leaving the area desolate by the year 1300. But the lives they lived during those hundred years showed the ability to adapt to living in all sorts of interesting locations. Perhaps the most famous of the dwellings is Cliff Palace, located underneath Chopin Mesa. Looking at the Cliff Palace and the surrounding vistas, visitors can see how Massa Verde got its name. Massa Verde means green table in Spanish, the green being the juniper tree scattered on the many mesas, tables, in the area. Junipers and other tree species can be seen throughout the park, even bordering the Anazazi homes, including Cliff Palace. These dwellings were more than just structures for the native people to live in, they were part of a community. Also known as the Ancestral Pueblo people, or the basket makers, the Anazazi used the land around them to their advantage, weaving baskets and making pottery out of the plants and rocks on the mesas, and farming crops on the top of the giant land masses. The dwellings at Massa Verde represent the lifestyle of the people, a lifestyle that was part of the reason why the place became a national park under park enthusiast Theodore Roosevelt in 1906. As Europeans headed out west to explore the uncharted wilderness of Colorado, New Mexico, Arizona, Utah, and more, they stumbled upon the ruins at Massa Verde and found remains of baskets and other Anansazi tools. William Henry Jackson, a famed photographer of western landscapes, got some of the first ever pictures of the dwellings in all their glory and presented them to the United States. By 1886, calls for Massa Verde to become a national park were starting to appear in local newspapers. And in the 1890s, two brothers called Richard and Benjamin Wetherill explored the ruins and pushed for the creation of a national park in Massa Verde as well. As mentioned earlier, the park was created in 1906 as part of the Antiquities Act, a monumental piece of legislature that helped protect historic places like Massa Verde. The park gained further recognition in 1978 as a World Heritage Site, one of only a select few areas on the entire planet. So, what is there to do at Massa Verde? Any visit to this intriguing park should start at the Massa Verde Visitor and Research Center, located near the entrance of the park. The center provides helpful information on the many areas to explore in the park, as well as a short history of the area. Driving down the main road to the park takes you past the campground for visitors who wish to stay the night at Massa Verde. Deep in the depths of the park, the road splits into two paths, one leading west towards Weather El Mesa, named after the above-mentioned brothers who explored the area before it became a national park. From there, visitors can choose to take a self-guided tour at the Step House, or go on a ranger-led tour at the Long House. The other road takes visitors south to the Far View area, heading past Mesa Top Sites to the three dwellings on and around Shop in Mesa, the Spruce Tree House, Balcony House, and the Cliff Palace. The former is a self-guiding tour, while the latter two are ranger-led tours. Whichever area you decide to visit, you are sure to learn a thing or two about these impressive structures and the people who lived in them. Massa Verde National Park represents only a little piece into what life was like for the peoples who roamed and lived in America before those who exist here today, but it shows that the same basic cultural identity of humanity stretches across hundreds of years. We eat, we sleep, we gather, we play, we work, we celebrate, we cherish, we pray. And it is the goal of the National Park System to help carry out the mission shown by Massa Verde and all of the other national parks, unity and the perseverance of life. Thanks for listening in, and we'll catch you next time.